I regret making this already. Monetization. A word which, depending on the context, will give YouTubers a hard-on or make an entire game's player base froth at the mouth. Before you get mad at me, I'm against anti-consumer business practices as much as the next guy. I've just Why? never seen a gaming community start pulling up a company's financial reports to prove a point. Now, I thought about just quickly summarizing the changes to the blood bond economy with very little personal input, but really what's the point of being a quote-unquote content creator if you can't vocalize all of your very important and not at all biased opinions. So let's hop right into the changes and then we'll get to my take on the whole thing and you can tell me just how out of touch I am in the comments. To start off, the sale prices for the three largest Blood Bond packs are ending, although the base prices and the Blood Bond bonuses for those packs will remain the same. More significantly, the Blood Bond rewards for the post-match accolade cards have been removed, meaning no more passive Blood Bond accruement. The Blood Bond nut sacks and elusive golden registers will still be lying around the map though, at least for now. The 25 Blood Bond reward for for successfully extracting with a bounty token five days in a row was moving to challenges. This brings the total number of blood bonds you can earn weekly from the challenges system to 50, and the number you can earn from engaging in the regular gameplay loop to zero. On the positive side, the cost for things like respecting hunters, rerolling the recruitment roster, and cleaning guns has been entirely moved from blood bonds to hunt dollars and other pre-existing mechanics. I really want to celebrate this, but I know it should have been that way from the start, so let's get to the controversy. Any topic hotly debated amongst a large group of people will have two sides. Selena or Haley? Left or right Twix? Circumcised or uncircumcised? The blood bond economy changes are no different, as practically every viewpoint on the subject can fall into one of two categories. Crytek good, or Crytek bad. But like any good Hunt Showdown player, I love to run the gauntlet, so I'm going to launch myself narrowly betwixt both of these perspectives and present to you with a different, less popular stance. This stance is called, Crytek didn't have a plan, but now they kinda do, and it feels yucky because of previously set expectations they continually reinforced. To a large part of the player base, the blood bonds gained from the post-match accolades were a driving influence on their sense of accomplishment. Because while paid cosmetics and premium currencies are a fairly vital source of revenue for live service games, Crytek never really treated blood bonds like a true premium currency. You could, if you achieved 5 gold accolade cards, be awarded 15 blood bonds for every successful match, in addition to the 25 from both the weekly challenges and the consecutive extraction reward. Oh, and we used to get like 850 of them just for completing the old, now gone training mode. Saving up and unlocking skins became part of the gameplay loop because of this, and was a supplemental source of progression after reaching Bloodline rank 100. Because, as we all know, the prestige system is a bit lacking. So while these economy adjustments do bring Blood Bonds more in line with the current standard for premium currencies in live service games, it still feels like a slap in the face to longtime players. And that's an issue of execution. If Crytek wanted a system like this to not be viewed so harshly, they would have needed to treat Blood Bonds like the premium currency they now want it to be from the get-go. Do I feel this change may very well be necessary for the continued support and longevity of the game? Absolutely. Does that lessen the sting? Not really. I will say it would feel completely unwarranted if they weren't rolling out new content at such an accelerated rate compared to the last couple of years. Because keep in mind, this is occurring in the midst of David Fifield having taken on the role of general manager, us getting a look at a year's worth of updates, update 1.13, a new boss, a new type of boss, a rain map condition, a new map and biome on the not too distant horizon, and the commitment to a goddamn engine upgrade. They are continuing to put a lot of work into the game long after after release, and companies that do this typically require additional sources of revenue outside of just game sales. So while there may be good reason for them to not revert this overhaul, I do think they need to make some pricing adjustments. As one Reddit post by a Tesla Wolf pointed out, the most expensive hunter and weapon skins cost approximately 10 US dollars worth in blood bonds, while the DLC packs available in the Steam store will net you anywhere from 4 to 6 skins total for the same price or less. And any of those $10 skins available for blood bonds are now worth roughly five months of blood bond earning under the new system. This alone reinforces the idea that Crytek does want us to pay and not play for skins now, and use the blood bonds gained from the challenge system for quality of life improvements like loadout and hunter slots. But that still leaves the issue of a lackluster endgame progression system, and since I know they have promised a prestige system rework, I'm wondering if they could have waited to introduce both changes at the same time. I think it would have lessened the blood bond blow a little. Simply put, the hill I've reserved my burial plot on is that in this whole blood bond ordeal, Crytek not good or bad. Crytek kinda meh. Alright, I know you all enjoyed hearing me lob these thoughts from the fence I'm straddling, but now it's your turn. How off base was I? And does anyone know the best way to remove splinters from your inner thigh? Fucking subscribe!